Hey guys, Joshua Peterson here at Peterson Electric. Got a interesting one for you on how to fix a hole in a wire. Whether it's a mouse, a screw, too long for a cabinet I've had, um, some of the low voltage uh, communication guys drilling holes for their coax and drilling right through a wire, a feeder or a subfeeder uh, branch circuit. So this video will be based on a bullet shot that unfortunately there was a bit of an issue a few months ago outside. Um, not at liberty to discuss it, but uh, we are here in Fort Collins. Uh, year right now is January 2018. This was last year. So they're trying to figure out how do we fix this. I came out to diagnose first. We had a switch right here <coughs> with non-GFCI protection. As I ohmed out that switch through the wire, there's three two by fours right here holding up that window on this wall and it shot right perfectly through you can see it came through here with the nine millimeter but it shot perfectly right through the wire and it's a 14-2 for you electricians it was just called a switch loop there's no power in at the bottom so I know you all you're gonna ask me in a corium all these questions the bottom line is there's nothing below there the dishwasher is not next to it and we have a 14-2 switch loop so we couldn't really figure out how to fix that other than how do we pull because the wire was completely frayed on all three conductors. Um, we cut it off on the inside in here, turned it into a GFCI outlet. This right here is fed over here with the new GFCI outlet. We fed through, we cut in an outlet down below, and we made sure that it's GFCI over here and here as well. And then we put in a pressure switch. Okay, so this is kind of, um, an idea that we had in order to try to repair this fairly quickly without ripping out the kitchen cabinet and having someone pull the counter in the sink. So that's now GFCI here. So instead of dead link in this, why not just on this 15 amp circuit, um, give them an extra GFCI. And I got the breaker off over there. But um, right here is the pressure switch. So we just drilled through the cabinet and mounted that, plugged it in, and then up here, And then down here, that will run through. As far as AFCI protection on that, you guys could just go ahead and put an AFCI, GFCI dual breaker. But this is a CH panel with the brown handles. Those are really pricey, in my opinion, compared to Siemens and Square D. So we'd rather just put a GFCI in here, and then you can AFCI in the panel. Um, this is kind of putting it back as is and a repair for insurance. So um, hopefully this will help you out. If this gives you good ideas on how to repair it without damage. Otherwise, we would have had to cut this open, pull the staple, pull the wire, fish it through that 2x4 if I could get the other end of it, and then refeed the wire, which didn't really make a lot of sense for all that damage. Um, but yet, beyond the fact, you can see right up against that corner wall where those two uh, black deck screws are, we could barely even... Um, that was like the edge of... Uh, the walls, what I'm trying to say, on the inside. So we couldn't even get closer over to here. I mean, it was, was all two by four. So we had no wire absolutely to deal with. So we just cut that off on both ends. And then as long as you cut off on the inside of that box and the inside of this box, so you do not energize up above here or down below, you're allowed to just snip that at both ends and no one can reuse it. All right, guys, hopefully it'll help you out. Thanks.